Welcome to tonight's devotional. It's good to have you join us. As we prepare for this time together, let's light our candles now. I encourage you to pay particularly close attention to tonight's reading as we consider the importance of hungering and thirsting. May God speak to your hearts as we focus our attention for this very last time on this week's theme of peace. Isaiah 56, verses 1 and 2. Thus says the Lord, keep justice and do righteousness, for soon my salvation will come and my righteousness be revealed. Blessed is the man who does this and the son of man who holds it fast, who keeps the Sabbath, not profaning it, and keeps his hand from doing any evil. Matthew 5, verse 6. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. In the book of Isaiah, we're often reminded of God's promise to Abraham of how the people of God are called to be a blessing to all nations. In our reading tonight, we find this continued encouragement of the type of community God's people are meant to be, a blessing to those around them. This is what the Lord says, records Isaiah. Keep justice and do righteousness. To put it simply, these two phrases can be expressed, live justly. The two Hebrew words here, translated as justice and righteousness, are a powerful and influential combination that transforms those within its orbit. It has important application and provides a particular approach for God's people. Now in the chapter before, in Isaiah 55, we hear of the compassion of God as he calls all those who thirst to come and drink, and even those without money to come and eat, were invited to seek the Lord and return to him so that he can have compassion on us. Because the way he thinks isn't the way we think, and his thoughts are higher than our thoughts. And in this way, 
We are to be led forth with joy and peace. Joy and shalom. Now this wholeness is what we seek as we live justly, as we seek justice and desire to restore everything sin has distorted. Now this flows into what God directs in our passage tonight when he says to keep justice and do righteousness. When we experience the brokenness of our world, it's easy to get discouraged and wonder, what's the point? Why bother? And this is why we find the encouragement here that soon my salvation will come. Living justly isn't a response to what's happening around us, but living justly is part of anticipating and acknowledging who has come and who is coming again. As I talked about this past Sunday, we're encouraged to rejoice in the Lord, and this rejoicing results in us participating in the repairing and renewing of the world, embodying the peace of Christ. The verses that follow in Isaiah speak to those who are on the outside, on the margins, and how even they'll be included in this restoration. And this includes us. We were people on the outside who God has brought in. In his book, Generous Justice, Tim Keller describes living justly like this. He says, we do justice when we give all human beings their due as creations of God. Doing justice includes not only the writings of wrongs, but generosity and social concern, especially toward the poor and vulnerable. This kind of life reflects the character of God. It consists of a broad range of activities from simple, fair, and honest dealings with people in daily life to regular, radically generous giving of your time and resources to activism that seeks to end particular forms of injustice violence, and oppression. As we prepare to celebrate Christmas, we're reminded of the ways God participates in justice and righteousness through the coming of Christ, through the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus, and through the indwelling of the Holy Spirit in his people. In a similar way, God had a physical response to the brokenness of his creation through the incarnation of Christ, there's a sense that we too should have a physical response to the brokenness and injustice in our world. This response isn't just anger or apathy of what we see around us, but it's a deep desire to see wholeness and restoration. It's a deep desire for righteousness. In the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus compares this desire to the physical desire of hunger or thirst. And it's through his coming that this hunger will be satisfied. As we enter a time of reflection, would you pray this prayer with me? God of peace, you alone satisfy. You require us to do justice, love mercy, and walk humbly with you. Show us our salvation in you. Empower us to live justly. Give us eyes to see those around us as you see them, and a courageous love to respond to the world you love. We ask in the holy name of Jesus. Amen. We are never asked to do anything Christ hasn't done already, and we are always empowered by the Holy Spirit to do what we're called to do. As we wrap up this week's focus on peace, you're invited to consider tonight's question. Do you desire the justice God asks for? Ask him for this hunger.